Assalamualaikum and good morning. Today I'm I am glad to welcome all board members to the annual general meeting 2019. Also present at the meeting today are Mr. Hamizan, our accountant, Miss Hani, our financial manager, Miss Pizza as the representative KH holding shareholder, and lastly Mr. Faiz as Maybank's representative. The objective of our meeting is to receive and consider the financial report for Malaysia Berhad and to apply loan in Maybank to invest. Before I start to our, our meeting today, can we proceed to the next item regarding the minute from the previous meeting? Any amendment? Yes, there is one amendment, Mr. Jefferson. A correction is made to item 24 which is the sum reserved for cash and cash equivalents of 101,448, not 110,448. I apologize for the error, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you for the correction, Ms. Hani. Can someone propose the minute to be passed a true record? I propose the meeting to be passed as true record. I, I second. By the way, if Ms. Pisa and Mr. Faiz have a question or comment relating to the, this item, please ask us after presentation. Okay. Let's proceed to our main objective of this meeting. The report are uh, open dis discussion. Mr. Hamizan, you may start your explanation now. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Now I will explain details about the statement of financial position of the company in 2019 and showing the comparison between 2019 and the previous year. Total non-current assets have decreased by 643,675 ringgit Malaysia compared to previous year. The total current assets are decreased by 1,988,714 ringgit Malaysia. The total current liabilities are uh, increased by 1,560,997 ringgit Malaysia. Next, the total equity for the company has the same amount with the previous year, which is 1,071,392 ringgit Malaysia. Next, we will go to the statement of profit and loss for post Malaysia Berhad. The gross profit is 47,404 ringgit Malaysia. The earning before tax and interest EBIT is negative 187,895 ringgit Malaysia. The earning before taxes, the earning before taxation is negative 1,193,861 ringgit Malaysia. The earning after taxation is negative 221,368 ringgit Malaysia. After a round up all liabilities and equity, it would make a total of 2,632,389 ringgit Malaysia. All the details appear to be lower than the previous year of 2018. That's all from me. Thank you for the presentation. Amzan. Next, Ms. Ani, you may proceed with your ratio analysis. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. 
Firstly, I will talk about the liquidity ratios of the company for the years 2018 and 2019. Both 2018 and 2019 have the same value of one times ratios. This means that a company can exactly pay off all its current liabilities with its existing assets. <clears throat> Next, we move on to the company's activity ratios. The inventory turnover seems that 2019 is doing better than in 2018, 381.03 times than 171.12 times. Even though 2019's rate are better, but given its relatively high ratio, it shows that the balance can lead to shortages and the company will lose sales. For the total asset turnover, the ratio for 2018 is 0.65 times, while 2019 is 0.45 times. It shows that 2019's low rate indicates that too much capital is tied up in assets and that assets are not being used efficiently in generating revenue. And lastly, for the activity ratios, we have the average collection period. The 2019 ratio shows that the company cannot convert its receivables as fast as it should. Thirdly, I will read and explain the profitability ratios. For the gross profit margin, 2018 is 14.39% and for 2019 is 4.05%. <clears throat> The low profit margin of 2019 indicates a high cost of goods sold, which can be attributed to adverse purchasing policies, low selling prices, low sales, stiff market competition, or raw sales promotion policies. For the net profit margin, 2018 is 1.35%, but for 2019, it is negative 14.55%. This indicates that the company has very little profit from its sales revenue. Next, for the operating profit margin, it seems that 2019, which is negative 7.14%, is, is less well equipped to pay for fixed costs and interest on obligations, have lower chances to survive an economic slowdown, and are less capable of offering lower prices than our competitors that have a higher profit margin. Moving on to the return on assets ratio. Just the same as the previous ratio, 2019 shows negative 6.48% compared to 0.87% in 2018. Therefore, I'm sorry, this can be interpreted as that 2019's business is less profitable and less efficient. Lastly, showing to you right now is the return on equity ratio, which indicates that 2019 is less capable of generating cash internally. Therefore, it is more dependent on debt financing, where the value is negative 15.91%, which is less than in 2018. Finally, the last ratio is the leverage ratio. For the debt ratio, we can see that 2019 is doing better than in 2019, where the value is 34.88% rather than 49.22%. That means the company has a high debt in financing its assets. For the second ratio of leverage ratios, we have the equity ratios. This ratio helps us see the proportion of debts and equity in the capital structure of the company. For the value itself, the percentage in 2019 shows a low value compared to 2018. This means that for every ringgit of the company owned by the shareholders, the company owes one ringgit to creditors. <clears throat> Lastly, we have the times interest earn ratio. Based on the proportions that I calculated, we can see that 2019 is more significant than 2019 than 2018 by 31.49 times in 2000, I'm sorry, then 18.91 times in 2018. It means that the company can meet its interest obligations because earnings are significantly greater 
than annual interest obligations. I think that is all for me for the company's analysis ratios. Thank you for the presentation, Ms. Hani. So, Ms. Pisa, what is your opinion based on the ratio was presented just now? I am planning to apply loan to invest in Postmisha Bharat to gain more profit. Um, thank you to the chairperson and financial manager, also an accountant, for your explanation. From a point of view, based on the statement of profit and loss on the of the 2019, there is a decreasing in comprehensive income compared to the previous year and just now i noticed in profitability ratio mostly all of the part under the profitability ratio less stimulating based on why why do you still want to invest in this company even though you know this company is losing that's all from me yes of course I still want to invest in Postmanship Bharat because I already plan with my superiors to continue this project as well for gain more profit in the future. What can you guarantee in order to maximize the return? I do not promise anything to you, but I remain confident in my stand to continue investing in post malaysia behind. If I do not continue this project, this will cause the surplus will withdraw this project and cause our company will not longer make projects that can increase our company's profit. Sorry for interrupting you, Mr. Chairperson. Based on the company's ratio that our financial manager Ms. Honey mentioned just now, our company was not able to make any investment due to the losses we faced this year compared to the previous year. And also for my analysis, the company that we want to invest is in at loss in the current year as they have mostly very low ratios compared to the previous year. And it is not the right choice for us to invest in this company. No, 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 no. I still will invest in post Malaysia Berhad. I am confident in my decision. If we continue to invest in post Malaysia Berhad, we will get increased profit from my company. I am the CEO of this company and I know the best to grow my to grow my company. I do not understand you. You own financial manager and accountant says that the company is losing. So why are you still stubborn to continue? This is for the good of your company as well. <coughs> so, how about your opinion, Mr. Faiz? Can we apply for a loan from, from my bank to invest in Post Malaysia Berhad? Hi, as you know, I am representative uh, of my bank. So basically based on uh, the performance of Post Malaysia Berhad for the years 2019 and 18, I can easily spot that their company is dealing with a high percentage of debt. As we can see in leverage ratio on debt ratio, in the year of uh, 2018, the total percentage recorded at 34.88 percent, while in 2019, recorded increase of 14.43 percent, which is 49.23, shows that their company has the highest debt in financing the asset. Next, on equity ratio, in 2019, the total percentage recorded at 97 percent compared to 2018, which is only. 53.55%. Uh, this shows that total percentage increased drastically by 43.45%. However, times uh, interest earned show a positive change in 2019. This company earned 33.18 uh, times compared to the previous year, 
which was 24.13 times. It shows that the company can meet the loan requirement for the interest payment. However, in my opinion, Post Malaysia Berhad is not suitable and stable company for you to invest in and make a profit. I suggest that your company to find a company that has good and stable financial performance. Hmm. Considering the ratio that has been presented earlier is very worrying and very risky for us to invest in post Malaysia Berhad, I think I agree with you, Mr. Faiz. We, we need to find a new company that has a good and stable financial performance. So what are your plans for future investment, Mr. Chairperson? <clears throat> I'm so sorry that we cannot directly invest in the company at the moment because we are worried that company will be on the verge of loss in the next few years. Uh, since we cannot to invest in Post Malaysia Berhad, I think we must find a new company that has good and stable financial performance. Miss Ani and Mr. Hamizan, can you guess a, can can you guess get a new company to we invest to the to the company? Yes, Mr. Chairperson, we will do our best. <coughs> All right, good. Shall we close this discussion? Yes. 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 Thank you for co cooperation. I hope. We will meet again in the next meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye.